What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon ADC, checking out the Jack Wolf Knives, Gunslinger Jack. This is the first ever locking knife from Jack Wolf Knives. They're known for their traditionals. And so, really, really excited to check this one out. I picked this up at Blade Show, so if you haven't watched my haul video, definitely go check that out. I picked up a lot of really great knives, but this is probably my favorite holder that I picked up. And so that's saying a lot because it is his first first locking knife, you know? So transitioning from traditional to lock, there's some question about how well that transition is gonna happen, but this was absolutely seamless. Definitely one of my favorite pickups, maybe not even Blade Show, maybe of the year, but really, really excellent. Now you're probably wondering why I'm putting this out so close to that haul video. Haven't had that long to sit with it. I've had this, I think, for six days. Have carried it every single day, amongst other knives, but it was Blade Show, so you're carrying multiple knives passed it around to a bunch of people, a bunch of people have handled this, but still really early to put out a video. And the reason I'm doing so is because this knife actually hasn't released yet. So it comes out June 16th at 11 a.m. Pacific. So if you're wanting to get on in on this, wanted to put out a video with my opinions and some information on it before that drop happens. Now, I did buy this with my own money. He had a bunch of them available at the table. So there's a ton of these out in the wild at this point. Well, I shouldn't say a ton, however many he brought to the show out in the wild at this point. And like all of his models, they come in five different variations. I went with this fat carbon purple haze. I believe all five were fat carbon this time, but purple haze, and you can see he did a really beautiful job of matching the anodization on that backspacer and the pocket clip to the fat carbon. I think it looks really, really excellent. And not just on this colorway, all five colorways just look really, really great with that anodization. It just kind of adds that pop and really draws your eye into that fat carbon. Now, as far as size on this goes, kind of right in my Goldilocks zone, I like it a seven to seven and a half inch overall length. This one's right in the middle at 7.35 inches. I guess that's not the middle, but close enough. 7.35 inches overall. And I'm actually gonna move the sticker out of the way because I think it's messing with the focus, the autofocus on the camera. But 3.23 inches of it, that is on the blade. You get a 2.86 inch cutting edge with that sharpening choil cut out and Really thin blade stock, it's 0.12 inches on the spine, but you can see it tapers down really, really nicely on that tip to get you a know, super slicey edge. S90V on the steel clip point style blade, really, really beautiful hollow grind, feels excellent. And just nice looking blade overall. Now getting into the handle, 4.12 inches, and that allows me to get a full four finger grip and it's really comfortable grip actually. Super comfortable grip, no problem getting all four fingers on there. You see my first two fingers are fitting on the lower part of this kind of gun stock shaped handle and my up, last two fingers are fitting on that upper part. Thumb locks in really nicely on that jimping. I wouldn't have minded one more jimp just from where my thumb st sits, but I understand why they stopped where you did. You can see that's kind of where the cutting edge stops. I didn't want to get too close to that nail neck. So stylistically, it definitely makes sense. But for my thumb, it still grabs onto it, but grabs a little bit further back than I'm used to on some other knives. Still, that's going to vary based on your hand size as well. So might not really affect everyone. And again, understand why he made that choice. Now, already mentioned 7.35 inches overall. The sandal is relatively thin. If you remove this pocket clip, you're looking at 0.46 inches thick. And with the pocket clip, you're at 0.58 inches thick. Now, on his normal traditionals, you wouldn't see that pocket clip. And so, because of that, he wanted to give you the option to just not have it. So, it does come with a recess plug that is also anodized in the same color as the clip. So, you can put that in there and switch this over to a sheath carry or slip carry like you normally would with a traditional. So bolster lock on there, and that works really, really well. You can see it locks up nicely, and the action on this is super smooth being on ceramic bearings. You have two different deployment methods, the first being this front flipper, and I'm not great at front flipping knives. This one's really small, so wasn't sure how that was gonna work for me, but really, really effective. One of the simplest front flippers I have, and almost never fail it. You can see it's just really, really easy to operate. The jimping goes right up to the top, catches your thumb, and you just roll it over that frame and have no problem opening it. Not sure if I was talking during all of that, but the acoustic on this when you open it are excellent as well. So I'm gonna pause talking and just flip this open. Has a really, really nice ring to it. Hopefully that's picking up on the microphone because there's something just super satisfying about that to me. I'm sure most knife people who enjoy flipping knives are just super satisfied by either that ting or that thump that you get on different models. And this one just has a really, really lovely ting to it. 
Now it is a bolster lock, again that works really well. You can just basically shake it shut at that point. And I mentioned two deployment methods. So it still kept the nail nick like, it, like the sharpshooter. So that's kind of that traditional DNA there. But you can use the nail nick a little bit differently than you would use on a slip joint. And it acts as a fuller basically. You can get your fingernail in there very easily and easily deploy it by just flicking out. And so spotty flicking this is just super satisfying and makes it extremely fidgety as well. And so just a lot of fun to play with overall titanium on the frame and the inlays are fat carbon so this titanium goes all the way down a 6AL4V titanium which as far as I know is the kind of titanium that you want to see that's the highest grade of titanium and so obviously excellent materials here and you're going to pay for those it's $350 and I think that's pretty fair for what you're getting. Riot is kind of the standard when it comes to OEMs, at least OEMs that aren't here in America. And if you are looking at an American OEM with these materials, you're going to be looking at a much steeper price. And so $350 I'm perfectly okay with. It's kind of, again, talking about Goldilocks ranges. I do buy cheaper knives occasionally, but a lot of times it's only if it's something that really stands out to me. Usually my price point is $200 to $400 is the area I like to stay. So kind of, again, upper middle area of that for me. And I definitely think it's worthwhile at that price point. Now I probably am going to remove this clip and put the recess plug in there. But if you do like the pocket clip, that looks excellent. It's got nice retention. I was using it with a pocket clip. I actually had this in my pocket with a bunch of other knives. So it's got a little bit dinged up on the back. You can probably already see, but nothing too, too major. And don't mind that. That's kind of one of the reasons I like staying in that 200 to $400 price point is when I start getting, you know, 600 to $800, I really get hesitant to carry and damage it. And so I'd rather just not buy those knives. But this one's excellent. Let me show you what comes with it because that's a big part of the Jack Wolf experience is really all of the swag that you get with it. He does an excellent job not, you know, just throwing it in a box. He's really thinking about every part of the packaging. And so inside of that box, you get this nice tin with some beautiful artwork that you'll see similar on the sticker and other items in there. So this artwork is actually done, I think I wrote it down, Sean Tiffany. And he is a former or current Marvel comic artist and so has done a lot of really great art on those tins and you can see it has that gunslinger jack on there it goes all the way around and nice kind of little metal tin has the color stamped on the bottom and when it was made and the tin itself it looks like was made in England has that jack wolf logo on the top now another thing that they're kind of known for is those microfibers this one get, got this really beautiful orange microfiber have it folded up nicely with some of the other swag inside and so has that laser etched logo there and just really cool the, it has a bunch of colors of these and then you get the of course pog and that has similar art to the sticker and the tin with the Gunslinger Jack on the back, Jack Wolf logo. And then you get a sticker. This one says, I'm your Huckleberry. Again, similar art that we saw in the other ones. Lastly is that recess plug. And so you can see it's color matched to the hardware on here. So it's gonna be the same exact color as that pocket clip. So I'm gonna plug that in there at some point. Once I get a slip for this, until then I'll probably just leave the pocket clip on. But really, really cool knife. I'm super impressed. Honestly, would never know that this was his first locking knife. It's right up there with really any knife that I picked up this year. And so one of my favorites that I picked up Blade Show, one of my favorites that I picked up this year, honestly, and coming out soon. So it's not too late to get this. Check the website for retailers that are going to be selling this. But again, it drops June 16th. So giving you a good week and a half or so once this video goes live to kind of check it out and decide, which I always think is nice. You know, sometimes you're trying to decide and you know it's a hot item and you just buy it because you don't have other information on it. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to put this out there. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy to answer whatever I can. As is, I'm sure, Ben, I think he has his contact information all up on the website and you can reach out to him on Instagram. So. If I can answer the question, happy to, but otherwise, let me know what you think of this knife it's down in the comments below. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.